Hey, what is going on guys? Power Gaming here and today I am back for another Q&A for Identity. It has been a while since I have made a video. Five months actually, but unfortunately life does get in the way. So what can you do? Anyway, I'm joined here with Identity's lead developers, John and Sean, better known as Paratus or Motown. Hey guys. Hey there. I'm John, by the way, if you don't know the voice. Yeah, and I'm Motown, the team producer. John, John, uh, he's the uh, project manager for Identity. I'm also joined here with uh, Identity's new community manager, Brandon, or better known as Beachball on the Discord and the forums. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me, uh, PG7. I handle a lot of the social media, and if uh, people want to get their questions answered, I'm the go-to guy for that. Well, it has been a while anyway since I've last done this, so... Um... I'm a little bit rusty. I'll just get straight into the uh, into the questions. First one is: You've obviously just released your release date for the Town Square, March twenty first. Is that set in stone? The final release date for the Town Square. You know, things happen, and it's always possible. But uh, everything where it stands now and how we expect it to be in the future, it should be a safe day. So it, it's fairly set in stone, but. You, I can't say, you know, 100% because we don't know what the future brings, but but you could count on it for yeah. now, most definitely. Well, that's good to hear. So, talking about mechanics, when you're in the game and you will decide to log out um, and say people are buying stock from you, are there automated systems to restock uh, your shop so you don't have to buy items in all the time? Yeah, so if you're talking as a business owner uh, when you log out, uh, yeah, so if you own a shop, and there's a lot of different kinds of businesses and identity too, but uh, the shops are kind of the, the fundamental backbone of the economy. And uh, if you were to buy a storefront and turn it into a shop of your own, there are NPCs there that handle everything when you're offline. You don't have to sit in there and man the counters. I mean, that's no fun at all. So uh, this, the NPCs will do it, and you just have to stock it with the items that you want to be sold there so they can be player crafted or they could just be things you found in the world but uh depending on the shop type you can control what is for sale and by that i mean that each shop that you create has a theme so if you were to find a new storefront that's available uh, in one of the major cities maybe and you say you want it to be a clothing store you could you could found a clothing store there uh, you choose the clothing theme, and that'll change the interior art to match. And at that point there, that decides what can be sold there. So in that case, clothing would have to be stocked in there. So you do that yourself. You you stock it, um, and, and that could be clothing that you made with your brand on it or, or whatever. And um, the NPCs will sell it. So you can go offline or do whatever you like. So another question. Uh, I've actually seen this question pop around quite a bit on uh, the live streams. And by the way, if you don't know, um, the devs live stream, is it, what, what day is it? Uh, currently it's uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. EST. So if you do want to watch development or just want to ask questions to any of the devs, they are there for you uh, to ask. Yeah, I've seen this question asked around quite a bit, and it's, won't the game feel empty with so few NPCs? Uh, so we, we, don't, we don't think so. We, we actually believe that uh, the fact that every person that you see in the world uh, makes the game more immersive. You know, you, every, every pl person you're interacting with uh, running around the world, that's another player. That's another potential interaction conflict. Uh, you, that you're 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 forced to encounter yeah the, the big thing is there I, I can see why people think that initially is because they come from games like grand theft auto where there's all this ambient life walking around and it's natural to think that without that it'll feel empty but it's really the opposite and we've experienced that firsthand in some of our other games and uh while it's, it's a little contrary to what you would naturally think um imagine like this so if you're walking down the street and in grand theft auto you bump into another player you know, it doesn't matter. He's fluff. You know, that character isn't real. It has no impact on you, and you can just punch him out or something. It doesn't matter. But when you're going down the street and everyone you see is a real player, that means that when you come up to this person, you can actually open a real conversation with them, and you could, you know, make a friend and go out and run drugs together or something. Like, every person you meet is a part of the world. Yeah, I found with um, Armour Armor 3 Life, even though the map was so big, uh, Altis, 
it still felt there was people everywhere because you could be going out, you could drive past someone, but sometimes in some scenarios you don't want people to be there. I've gave this example before. If you're making heroin or something and then a police helicopter goes overhead, you're like, has he just saw me? And <laughs> it, it, it's kind of, it's emerging gameplay that you wouldn't find in any other game. Yeah, and that's what makes these games so fun, too, is because when you log in, you have no idea what's going to happen. You might have this great plan in your mind. I'm going to go out and I'm going to go pick some apples and just have a nice, relaxing time. You get there and, and you know, someone pulls out a gun and all hell breaks loose. You never know what's going to happen. And that can lead from, from a gun being pulled on you to you being kidnapped and maybe you're joining that group the next thing you know. And now you're the bad guy running around. Like, who knows, you know? And that's what makes this game so fun is that the craziest thing can happen and you never know what's going to happen and that's a big part of having a world that's full of people and like you gave that example with altus life and you know in, in altus life for example if you're on a server with a decent population it did not feel empty and that is with a fraction of the amount of players that an identity server can hold so it's going to feel even busier and and another way we handle that is the map is designed in a way that we kind of herd people into certain areas so there will be areas that are quite busy, like the town square of one of the major cities. There's going to be people there at almost at all times running around, doing their shopping, all that kind of thing. But then when you go out into the woods, that's where we don't want it to be so populated. So we're able to spread out our um, the population just based on how we populate the map and design it to work. Yeah, I, I always um, hear people compare an identity to GTA. And I tend to compare you more with... Uh, star citizen not the fact obviously it's in space but the fact that the um, the emergent gameplay is there which star citizen is known for because it's play driven yeah i think star citizen is probably one of the better comparisons for identity and it does sound weird because it's a crazy sci-fi game but yeah, in a lot I... of ways it's closer in a, in a sense we we see identity ourselves as like star citizen but on the ground on a, on a single yeah, planet we had a little bit more drugs and crime and <laughs> for sure you know <laughs> there's not much heroin production in star Citizen. no but you apparently, but... you apparently can grow space weed in star Citizen. oh space weed yeah okay, okay. Well, well all we have is earth weed. <laughs> you're gonna have to deal with earth weed and identity <laughs> not, a, not as potent as space weed, unfortunately <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next question. Identity's business model. Is it going to be free-to-play, subscription-based, a one-time buy, and will it have my microtransactions? So it's not free-to-play. It There will be a purchase price, but there's also not a subscription. So it's a one-time purchase. There are microtransactions to further that, although they're completely cosmetic. There's nothing that will ever yeah, be required. Just, nothing that's going to impact your game. Yeah, just clothing, vehicles, and houses. That's pretty much the extent of any microtransactions. Yeah, like a microtransaction could get you a car that looks different and you can only get that decal or something through a microtransaction. Or an apartment, uh, you can get like a floor plan and that sort of thing. But but nothing that you get through a microtransaction is going to give you a competitive advantage. Yeah, um, in terms of uh, car cosmetics, um, will base solid colors be, um, will some of them be microtransactions? Oh, sort of, yeah. I mean, it depends on the car. So likely the way you're going to see vehicle cosmetic uh, microtransactions will be that you can buy a decal for a certain model of car or a paint job or something. So when you get that car, um, you could either apply it to one that you already have or when you buy it, you could you could then apply it right away. Uh, do you keep the, um, the color? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Um, the... So like, do you keep the paint job? Well, the paint job would be kind of part of that microtransaction, so the microtransaction could be a, a special paint job yeah, that so only exists through that. Um, and you it, will keep it. Yeah, yeah it's permanent. It's not a one-time use, yeah. Right, no, yes, yes, yes. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I saw a game do that recently. Ah, yeah, no, we, we don't... Oh. We do not like that idea at all. We, we if you if you pay real money for something, we want you to keep it permanently. Yeah. It's like it's the same sort of thing when it comes to actual vehicles. I think the vehicles you're getting current identity pledge is going to have lifetime insurance on it too. So yeah, we don't want people to spend a decent amount of money and then just have it go up and smoke. You know, down the road, that's not fair. 
So especially when some of these microtransactions, you know, um, with identities, they're quite cheap. I mean, if you look at a game like Star Citizen, which is our last example, is uh, you pay crazy. Yeah, you can you can buy all the ships for like twenty grand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who would do that, but um, there's somebody in this room right whoa, now. Whoa, no, 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 no. I, I am definitely, I, I'm not that close. No, not at all. But, but I, I am definitely obsessed with Star Citizen, and I, and I have, I've pledged to that game. Yeah, Star Citizen is, uh, is looking pretty good. <laughs> right, uh, pledge rewards. Um, with the new website, um. There's obviously going to come changes to prices. Will there also be new pledge rewards to go along with that? There will. Uh, a lot of the pledge rewards are going to be formatted a little bit differently. It's not going to be the big kind of groups that you get right now. There will be some packages, but for the most part, you'll have more of an option to buy individual pieces as you'd like. Um, things like, you know, like an apartment, for example, you could buy an apartment floor plan and have access to just that without having to commit to the garage type and, you know, a vehicle or whatever else comes with it right now. But that said, the pledges that you do right now, those rewards and those groups will be a better price and if you were to buy those individually after the update um i've brought this up many times before probably too many times but uh will there be a drone camera system <laughs> of some sort? you know we're, we're, oh, we're still debating that and yeah. uh uh we we like the idea of it because as you know identity is really a reflection of modern culture and society and and drones are a part of our a fairly new part of it anyway a mm -hmm. part of our our modern culture so so it's it's possible that you might see drones only for the explicit reason that uh that they're part of modern society that's it if we do put them in there are like gameplay balancing factors that have to be considered for Correct. example yeah we don't want them to be used as spy drones you know going around so if we introduce them and as possible we will they're going to be very easy to take out so you're not going to want to use it in any kind of hostile way you know they'll make noise people will see them and they'll probably be able to be destroyed easily so but if you want to use it just in your own area doing some cool footage capture for a video or something it would serve its purpose there i like to hear that can you mask your identity so if someone comes up to you they don't know who you are you can wear a balaclava mask like uh, say you're robbing a bank and and you uh you wear a mask on your face uh you can mask the distance in which someone can see your name tag uh, and identify you, um, but not completely. You can't. Now, to extend on that, though, it's on, on community servers, not on the official server. Uh, yes. Yeah, you are... Um, the server manager will have the option to set it so that you don't see anybody's name at all until they greet you with a wave or something. So your character doesn't know their name until they introduce themselves to you. And then from that point on, you know who they are. Yeah. Usually when we're responding to questions, we're doing it from the perspective of, of official servers. But uh, a lot of things change between official servers and private servers. And that's, that's one of those cases. Uh, do you have a feature to prevent NLR? Yes, we do. Um, it's really simple, really, in, in that uh, when you die, you get a list of places to respawn. And of those places, uh, it could include things like your home or hospital or something along those lines. You will be able to only choose ones that aren't too close to where you died. So if you are just outside your house, um, you know, within a kilometer of it, for example, and you get killed, you're not going to be able to spawn at that house. You're going to have to go somewhere further away and travel there. Yeah. Just just to be clear for those that don't know, NLR uh, stands for New Life Rule. And this is a, uh, a rule that existed as a mechanic or as a, a server rule in mods across Gary's Mod and Arma 3 for... Uh, Altus life and and basically what that was is it was a rule stating that you weren't allowed to return to the place that you died at for a certain amount of time uh, and so uh, so we 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 like to handle that sort of thing through game mechanics uh, in, in which case John just mentioned it is uh, based on like the spawn points that you're able to select from after dying and uh, discluding ones that are too close to your character. Yeah. It's a pretty important thing too, because if you think about it, 
Um, what you, you run into without some kind of feature like that is uh, you kill a guy, for example, and you rob him. You take his uh, what you can off him. Um, now, that guy, you don't want him coming back immediately within 30 seconds because you killed him right beside his house, and then he shoots you while, you know, you're hovering over him. You know, it's when you take somebody out, if, if you defeat them in PvP, you know, you need to be sure that you have defeated them and they're not still a threat, right? Yeah, um, in the mod, I had troubles with NLR quite a bit. Um, especially <laughs> a lot of people playing <laughs> as a police officer. It, sometimes it wouldn't be so bad, but you get someone, you kill them, and then their mate would kill you, and then they'd respawn in Kavala, run over to your body, take the stuff back, and then they're away like they'd never died. Yeah, yeah absolutely. that's what we want to avoid. So, it was annoying, but... You know. So, what development struggles have you encountered so far? So, this is like ranging from programming to even 3D modeling. It's funny eh? because I was just ranting about one of these a couple <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> today's development is that we've decided that a deprecated middleware we're using called Scaleform, which we paid a decent amount of money for. Um, isn't going to be supported anymore by the Autodesk, so we have to start looking now at different user interface systems. Um, so that's one. Um, our lead programmer right now is in the process of updating our engine, doing what's called a code merge. So up to this point, we uh, we haven't updated our engine really in over Since... a year. At least yeah. a couple of years, maybe. Yeah. Since 4.13 on Unreal yeah. Engine, and uh, now it's up to like 4.18. Yeah, yeah. So he's been doing that merge, and he's just about done. But these are the kind of technical things that most people don't think about. Like most people don't realize that it's a pain for, to do that as a as in a big project because we have engine level changes that we've done where a lot of smaller Unreal Engine projects, you know, uh, they can just update like that because they didn't modify the engine. So it gets way more complicated when, when you start making changes to the engine itself. And, uh, I mean, that's on just the programming front. Uh, that's just this week I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Um, there's there's always things going on. Um, we just, you know, fortunately, when you encounter these sorts of things time and time again, uh, you can knock them out pretty quickly. This merge... Um, Henrik had that done in a matter of, I think, three days, and last time it was done by our previous um, lead programmer, Mark, it took him, geez, like a, a couple weeks minimum, if not more. Um, it, it's a big mess, so it's one of these things we've been putting off for a long time, and someone just took that out like it was nothing, I was very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the art, I don't know, Sh Sean knows much more about what's going on in our art world than I do. But yeah, we, we haven't really had any true struggles with the art like, or anything. Early on, uh, one of the one of the issues we ran into at the town square is that uh, uh, we didn't have consistent door heights and door sizes. And and so that, that created a, a problem uh, as we were sort of learning on the job. Uh, as we realized that uh, these doors like had different heights on the, <laughs> yeah. on every individual building, I, there are scaling issues pretty much across the board on that. Yeah, on the yeah, early. yeah, on the early one. Yeah, and that's that's actually one of the reasons that we remade the whole town square back then. Uh, yeah, when we started off, we were on a really so we um, we essentially had more amateur type people working for us and it, it caused a lot of issues in the beginning but all that is pretty much just replaced at this point all of our artists right now of which we have a decent amount are incredibly skilled so yeah these skilled guys are replacing all the junk stuff that was done in the early days yeah um did you guys start with just three members of asylum I mean, yeah, in the early days, like, the very early days, like, the first days, yeah, it was Sean and I, and then there was one lead programmer, Mark, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. that was it for development, and then we had a couple outsourced people, um, mostly from Russia, who were mm. doing the 3D modeling and that sort of thing, but they, they didn't have the experience, and they did okay work, um, and we had, uh, eventually, we got one artist, um, I don't want to say his name right now mm -hmm. on the stream, but yeah. he, he did work that we thought was great at the time. I mean, we really liked it. He did our 
entire first version of the town square, almost all the buildings and everything. And, and you know, as time progressed and we started getting our hands on some better talent, we realized that, you know, the, the stuff that these new guys are doing just blew away the original stuff so much that it almost looked out of place. Yeah, our, our standards definitely evolved as we le learned what we were missing. Yeah, we came from Arma modding at our core. Um, back in the day, I mean, I worked on other games before that, but, like, really, where Sean and I really got to Arma mod, so, really, I guess, when we were looking at it, we were kind of looking at the graphics of our game, like, comparing it to Arma at the time or something, and the buildings were on par with Arma, and now all of our art is so far beyond that at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to be honest with you, you can actually tell, you know, in that GIF you released on the uh, last dev blog, yeah. it looks so goddamn good. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've just noticed now, um, I, I remember a while ago on Twitter, I remember reading a question, and I was talking about the skybox, and I can see that the dynamic clouds are in there. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, true shoot. Sky. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, we're, we, we, love, we love True Sky. I think everybody that encounters it loves it. Yeah, and, it uh, is. You do recognize it from Arma, though. I think that's probably yeah, they, there, right? they they also yeah. use True Sky, yep. Yeah. Obviously, um, your interiors look incredibly good. Um, you released the hotel um, video, and that looked amazing. And then you've shown a couple uh, lobby pictures and stuff like that. So how have you actually overcome the obstacle of keeping that graphical fidelity whilst having a massive open world? Um, I guess I'll take that because it's kind of a more technically art kind of deal. Yeah. But... Uh... Really, I mean, okay, it comes down to two different ways to handle that. On the interiors, we use a lot of baked lighting. So this is lighting that we put a lot of processing time into once, and then it's kind of like baked in so that your computer doesn't have to think so hard when it's actually playing. Um, like, for example, the interior of one of these buildings could take us six hours just to render the lighting for essentially one frame and uh yeah <laughs> and then but what's nice is then we just save that data that it rendered and then when you're when you're playing it your computer is almost doing nothing so that's how we get such really nice looking interiors and then when it comes to the outside because the sun's moving we can't do that because you know the shadows move so um the, the exterior is done with dynamic lighting but we also use some really cool tricks um a combination of post-processing and um uh, some sort of like an indirect lighting mechanic that we can do so we can kind of mimic what the bake lighting does pretty accurately but at like real time kind of performance and um spatial os uh, it, it isn't really too related to this spatial os allows us to have a lot of network objects but really this is pretty much completely a rendering issue and we just have a lot of like level of detail type things and by that i mean the more of it is visible on your screen um a higher detailed model is displayed as it gets further away you're actually rendering like a really junky looking model but you can't tell the difference because it's so far um there's a lot of uh, methods and tricks like that that can be used to to yeah. get performance and uh, on the asset creation and the things, uh, when it comes to interior and exteriors, uh, we we put a lot more effort and fidelity into our interior assets. Uh, while we can take some shortcuts with exterior world props, because we we understand that the player isn't going to spend time staring at those objects, examining examining them, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of picking apart like the detail uh but with interior objects your character your your eyes are a lot more focused on what you're what you're interacting with yeah especially i mean you want to take that to like the end degree there be the uh in, in player housing areas absolutely Bec yeah because because those are instanced so when you go into your player housing the outside world is kind of gone right i mean you can see it out the windows but it's not active and um what that allows us to do is really kind of crank up the fidelity of the assets because we know for a fact that there's not going to be a lot of people in there. There's not going to be vehicles driving through your living room, I don't think. So, <laughs> so we can really yeah. kind of... plus being a, like a furniture item that players can use to customize their apartments. They they really want to see those things look nice. You know, 
we, we make sure to put the, in the extra fidelity. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, but that said, when you compare us to other games, like, you know, a popular game that came out in the same engine recently that you probably know of, you know, if you want to compare the art even on the outside, uh, we are just miles beyond in the, like, quality than some of these other big games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How has getting your own office development space improved overall development? God, it's been huge. It's ten, tenfold. The communication has been like improved greatly. Yeah, I mean, uh, with Brandon here, uh, the community, <laughs> I'm sure, really feels it quite a bit. I mean, he's yeah. in constant contact all day long with the community. So. Yeah, I mean, I see him on the Discord like every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, Absolutely. Uh, answering small questions, even if it's something completely random, <laughs> he's there answering it. But yeah. like, that's what I like to see. That's that's Absol the biggest thing you were lacking before. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the concerns that we were hearing from the community uh, before, we're we're not hearing anymore. So we we know that we're we're on the right track. Yeah, I remember like when I was actually when Brandon came in for an interview. I remember actually telling you. Like you're asking about our community, I was like, "Oh yeah, we we are doing almost nothing right now." So I was like, yeah. "Good yeah, we, luck with that." <laughs> <laughs> we need your help, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, yeah, from the actual like development of the game, uh, things are are going so much easier too because you know we're in here and we're we're working all day and we can communicate so much easier now. So that's that's a big thing too. Not to mention just the fact that we have more manpower than we did before as well. Yeah, um, obviously when the Times Square is released, um, it's probably going to be, I'm no game developer, so, so don't go at me on this, but it'll be easier for you to push updates out um, in terms of the swap module and stuff like that, because everything's already oh. there. Oh, for, for sure. sure. The, the, the second module will definitely be a lot faster than the, the first one. So that means that... Um, with Brandon doing all, all of your community stuff, he can then go in, uh, get footage for the swap module while you're focusing on development of the <sighs> stuff that's actually important. Yep, Sean's already been tasking our art guys with SWAT stuff, so we're yeah. already kind of moving in that direction right now. Yeah, and in fact, we, we've actually we've been kind of working on and off with that for quite a while too, so... But uh, we're, we're really starting to kind of put a lot of dedicated focus on that now as we move away from the town square yeah as far as asset creation. as far as art goes there's only a couple little parts of the town square that really need done up it's um really the the time being spent on finishing town square is definitely more on the code side of things so that allows a lot of his shift in art to be like yeah. going over to SWAT. It's, it's really just polish left with the town square. Now. Have you ever thought about adding soft body physics for cars into the game? I know you haven't started on the race module yet, but have you thought about it? Uh, well, not really, because as a network game, like usually when you, I mean, you're talking about vehicle damage, right, from collisions yeah, and so, that sort of thing. So kind of think yeah. of the next car game type, not yeah, as in depth, um, but. Yeah, it's not really feasible for an MMO because you have to keep in mind that any of those damages that happen, you need to kind of transmit data that's saying exactly how it's damaged to everybody else. Otherwise, everyone's going to be seeing different things and it'll just be weird, you know? So so okay. that just becomes too much data. So what we do have, though, is you will see car damage. So there's like eight different areas of a car. You know, you're talking like the front left versus the front right or the back center, you know, all that kind of area. And so we can crunch it in by certain areas using these morph things. So we can we can damage a car pretty decently and only transmit like, you know, up to like maybe a dozen numbers, which is pretty minimal bandwidth. So we kind of simulate soft body when it's not actually physics based, if that makes sense. So yeah, it'll yeah. you'll you'll crunch up your car. It just won't be, you know, as far as that that game takes yeah. it to a whole different level. Yeah. For for some reason, when you said soft body at first, uh, my mind went straight to like rag dolls. So, I, <laughs> so I was just thinking like uh, like a uh, a car that is like rag doll. <laughs> like I wonder how that would look. <laughs> That's, well, other well, but we could test it. Yeah, we could we could find out what a car looks like doing that. <laughs> oh my! Obviously, you've been looking into VR. Um, 
Brandon put a post up on Facebook giving Uh-oh. everyone a tour. <laughs> there yeah. was a HTC Vive in there. Um, <laughs> like, it's obviously not confirmed. You, you have clarified before that you're just kind of playing around with it. But mm-hmm. do you think you would ever consider doing kind of like a VR paintball? Because I know you've got a paintball course in, in the game. And kind of like... Um, uh, what's that game called? Um... Counterfeit? No, 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 no I, I think there's Rec Room. I, rec, rec, room I, rec Room, that's it. Um, have you ever thought about doing something like that? We, we really want to, and uh, it's possible that uh, given that uh, we can maintain the, the FPS required to do VR in Unreal Engine uh, with our game, uh, it's possible that we may enable it for certain environments, maybe not the entire world. Uh, because you do have to maintain at least a consistent 90 FPS, and we're not sure yet if that's what we can do. Or we, but we haven't we haven't tested it yet. So yeah, it's even it's even a little worse than that because it's 90 FPS with two different screens being rendered. Yes, yeah. So yeah, that's it's not easy. So really, what if you see VR and identity, and it's quite possible. But uh, what it will be is it'll be certain areas. Um, that you can access in VR, well, you can't everywhere. And things like, yeah. you know, you go in your cinema, in your apartment, possibly, stuff like that. Um, being able to walk around in your in-game home in VR would be kind of cool, to be honest, moving around furniture and that kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, you know, things like paintball, um, given that they're instance matches, that is actually it's one possible. of the ones that would be possible. Yeah. But then again, if we did go down that road with it... Um, you'd probably be playing against people that are also playing with their mouse and keyboard, you know, when it be only VR. Mm. So it it might be a little, it'd be difficult, but you know, if you want that immersion, sure. (laughs) (laughs) Right. uh, A question for the modules. I've seen this one bombing around quite a bit as well. Uh, When the module does come out, will there be an NDA on uh, Twitch streaming and Um, recording? no. No. I've brought this question up before. Um, so, you know, the combat mechanics are pretty much there. Um, will guns jam kind of like they do in Far Cry 2? John, I know you ha- haven't played it before, but... I've seen jamming in a lot of games, though. I think it's like America. You had to fit, uh, work with jams and that kind of thing. We, uh, we don't currently have jamming in it. It's something that we would consider. The only thing I'm not a really big fan of with jamming is when it comes to any kind of PvP encounter, I really don't like randomness. I don't like yeah. random numbers being yeah. what determines if you live or die. You know? Right. Yeah. You yeah. wanted to... Like, the whole the whole idea that we chose not to do skill points or experience gain uh, with, uh, with characters in identity was so that everybody would be on the same level uh, playing ground and so i so, so i i don't I didn't mean to interrupt you there yeah, just, okay. that, just to clarify there there are actually skill points though just not in stuff that's combat oriented I just, right yeah 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 with with like corporations and a few other things that you can do with your character but uh but as far as combat goes we want you to be on the same level playing uh, field as everybody else uh, you're a new player you have just as much potential to defeat another player in combat as a as a veteran uh, player there are things though that can give you advantages but they're True, not drugs. things that yeah that's one yeah like for example if you're on cocaine you're gonna you know you're gonna have a little bit of a boost going uh, temporarily you know? oh this is but, but you could become addicted to it too. Yeah, you will get addicted if you use it. If it's something you use frequently, you're going to become an addict. Yeah, but but again, like what he's saying though is that's something that's available to everybody new or old. It doesn't matter if you have access to it. Then you know that's the thing. We want anybody to be competitive. The more skilled person should always win. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go back to um, businesses re- real quick. I know you've said before you're not really big fans of. Uh, making passive income but is there a possibility you could make passive income from owning businesses that other players are running for you um well i mean one way it can happen is uh, if you own a corporation um this is something that we talked about in a stream i think just yesterday is uh, say you own a, a trucking company and you have 
big transport trucks that you've managed to save up tons of money for and um now you have uh, a dozen employees and when they log in they you know so your employees might not be able to afford these trucks but they can use them from your corporation if they're if they're an employee yeah, does that really make it passive though you know because like someone else oh, no, because you someone, invested though yeah well well somebody's doing the work though to earn you that yes that money but from from a business owner standpoint, it's kind of passive, but yeah. only after you've invested enough money to make the yeah. business work, right? So, but yeah, what, what he's saying is like the 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 truck transport uh, driver driving a truck owned by the company uh, when they when they complete a uh, delivery mission, a percentage of that will go toward the corporate corporation. Yeah, I I wasn't talking in terms of like getting AI to do it for you. Um, because that is then ultimately sit back and just let the money roll in scenario. Yeah, I mean, really, the the main idea behind passive income is that we're all for income if somebody's working. Yeah, we just yeah. don't come to be coming in when you sit there, AFK. This question popped up on the live stream yesterday, actually. Uh, will there be different payment options such as uh, PC? Yep. <laughs> don't know what, what more to say there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, our, our website with the with the new edition that'll be coming up soon uh, that Liam's currently working on, it will have additional payment options. Yeah, and uh, your payment options will differ from country to country. So you'll have some like local, um, you know, ones that uh, are applicable only to you. There, for example, here in Canada, uh, you'll be able to pay with Interac, which is a Canadian system, um, which uh, in you know other countries tend to have their own sort of things too. So there will be a, a, a decent array of options to pay with, including PayPal. Yeah, and and just to clarify, we do not collect any of the financial information that you that you source through those payment options. Absolutely none of it, and that's the whole reason that we use PayPal at the moment is so that we won't be financially responsible for your personal information should you enter that. So yeah, we we uh, we only want to use payment options in which we uh, will not have your personal information in, in some database yeah. on our. What he means is that the database is actually going to be hosted. Not by us, but by the company that does the actual credit card processing. So yeah. we don't do that ourselves directly. So we don't store your credit card information is what he's getting at. Yeah, it'll be safe. Yes. <laughs> Hunting has been brought up briefly before. Can you go into any more depth on what, what's going to be involved with hunting? Yeah, so hunting is one of those things that Spatial OS really opened some big doors for that. Um, for example, with Spatial OS, what it allows us to do is have AI operating even when no one's around there. So on the server, we, we can have these animals, and they, they have their own brain, their own desires. They'll wander around in the forest. Like, I'll use a deer, for example, because it's pretty simple. Um, they're going to be walking around, uh, eating from plants and stuff all day. Uh, they'll, they'll leave tracks as they're going. They'll leave droppings. And this sort of thing will happen even when no one's anywhere in the area. So when you come into this forest now with your rifle ready to hunt, um, you might not find the deer right away because there's not there's not spawn areas like in a traditional MMO. You don't go to like this one place and there's like five deer that spawn there at all the time, you know. So they're you all go in the yeah, and they wander. So when you go in there, you will literally have to track these animals unless you just get lucky. And it if you've ever played the game The Hunter, uh, it's pretty it's pretty close. It's really close. That is that is the closest game to it. Yeah. So you'll find these tracks and you'll be able to see the direction in. And then if you follow that, you know, you can you'll eventually find the animal. And you then you shoot it and you skin it. You eat it or sell it. Can you um bait animals in? Baiting isn't something that we currently have, but it would be completely yeah. possible giving our it'll, it would actually it'll probably to... yeah it'll probably make its way into the system as we kind of narrow down on that feature yeah I, i'm sure like it, you know once identity's out we're going to con so you know when identities release that's just the start uh, there's going to be constant updates to it like every month you'll likely get a decent sized patch so we're going to be adding in more features and expanding hunting and everything else as we go. I brought this idea up to you last week, and it's for DLCs. I know you've said um, different time frames you, you would like to do. Um, Sean said, like, a cowboy time. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I, I I was th- really just kind of throwing things out yeah, there. That's yeah, not yeah. that's not something that we're uh, we're officially considering at the moment. But uh, but yeah, with DLCs, uh, some things that we'd like to consider doing in the future is maybe having different islands that you can fly to, uh, and that's kind of how the passport system works. Uh, that's how passports work. So when you when you buy a pledge on our website and you see that you have a passport, that passport is allowing you access to the island in the main game. Uh, so in the future, there may be additional passports which you, you can buy to travel to different islands. Yeah. So what it is is like you're actually going. Your character actually has a passport. Every character has a passport, and you'll actually see different stamps in your passport depending on what I guess you call them DLCs or islands that you bought. So there's only one to start obviously but in the future if we add more you'll get more stamps in there and you'll be able to travel there so have you uh, considered so I, I brought up the example of the uk kind of creating a dlc for say a map inside of the uk it's definitely something we could do yeah. because different places bring up new gameplay opportunities yeah. because the uk Absolutely. is more so surveyed than america because america is so vast you could even do it with australia places like that yeah the idea is like really when, when we do that we're going to want places that are different so the first island is kind of uh is uh is the a Amer- fantasy Amer- version of southeastern states yeah it's 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 the the whole southeast of the u.s is basically basically what the the current island is based on but uh, we'd love to do some european like theme stuff with you know with the uh, quintessential european architecture uh, yeah, yeah. kind of going on uh, yeah, maybe, that'd, that'd be a great example really. yeah i mean don't get me wrong i would love to um ride around on a horse yeah it's actually to be honest as far as the different places in the world go i say the uk area you know would be uh probably pretty high up there on the list i'm not going to like commit to anything obviously but when we do start looking at them um the fact that we have such a large following in um france uk germany um quite a few european countries uh you know that would that would put it up there on the priority list, probably. Just going quickly, going back to skills. Uh, what skills can you expect to gain? So, really, skills. Okay, skills and identity. For, first of all, it's like what Sean was saying earlier combat how the skills aren't going to be things that are going to give you a real advantage. The, the skills and identity are more focused around convenience and time yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, so, mining faster. Exactly. Uh, cutting yeah. trees right. down. Okay. I see. Yeah. So, so different things like that. Like you actually go up in the skills by doing the action, and the way it works is that different things that you're doing, like there's, there's typically there's three tiers of skill. So as you progress in one uh, far enough to unlock the next tier, it gives you a different bonus, and then you know you go a little further, it'll unlock another. So there's three tiers that you can progress into for different actions. Yeah. That's actually very reminiscent of GTA San Andreas. I think um, GTA Five had something similar as well. Oh, but... I didn't actually. No, I don't remember that. But that's yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't yeah, you... play enough of San Andreas to know. Yeah, if you just ate pizza all the time, you would get fat, and then you won't be able to run for as long. <laughs> yeah. um, that's pretty cool, actually. Um, oh, I, I do. I I've do done remember. that in real life. I know that. Word. <laughs> I do actually remember that in one of the like GTA three maybe it was that like uh, you your character would get like fatter. Uh, it is some, yeah. I don't know if it was GTA actually, but it was some game. I think it was GTA three. Yeah, like wasn't yeah. it? Like, I remember. I remember might have going like and use weight benches and everything yeah. to try and get yeah. back yeah, in shape. Yeah, San Andreas. I thought. Yeah, San Andreas. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I- but yeah, we don't we don't have any kind of uh, okay. Before let me preface what I'm about to say. So in identity, you can't do anything to change your body physique physically, and like um, as far as appearance goes, right now, just because we don't have the resources for that. But uh, there will be things that you can do uh, to work out and that sort of thing. It's just not displayed that way until we have uh, you know a larger. Uh, our team to handle that sort of work but uh you, there are things you can do to work out to get stronger um one of the things that sean's talked about in the past is how you can you can lift weights and then you can get stronger for um hand-to-hand combat that kind of thing um boxing 
sense. So you you can actually improve your physique yeah. in that sense. Can you drive and shoot simultaneously? No. <laughs> this is one of those. It's kind of yeah. a of discussion right now. So currently in the design, no butt it is something that we are going to look at. He he's specifically asking the if you could drive and shoot. You can't. Oh, okay. You definitely. Okay. You yeah. definitely cannot drive and shoot. <laughs> Not but, uh, driving. No. But uh, but we are debating uh, currently whether we want passengers to be able to shoot out the window. While yeah, the sorry, that's just I just pictured and, uh, one thing yeah, in my mind yeah. and went with it. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I uh, the, some of the things that we have to consider with this is uh, is how it will ch- affect gameplay, and that's uh, you know during police chases the cop behind you doesn't have a passenger to shoot at you with. You know, but uh, but he's chasing with his police car, and your passengers can just pop out the windows and shoot the driver out of the car. You know, so we we really want to uh, be careful with that kind of thing because we want police chases to to be interactive and fun for yeah for both sides. Originally, this is and the reason why I'm just going to end on this a little bit more is because this has been like a topic of confusion lately in our community. So, um, in the original plan, we decided against it totally. Um, but like I said in one of the streams recently, this is something that uh, I'm willing to like look at more just because it does, it's one of those things that kind of feels right. It's what feels intuitive to the player to be able to do something like that. If we did do it though, you can pretty much count on not being able to shoot backwards. <laughs> and you also have to um, consider the stress system. So on official servers, you're not going to build drive by an innocent person drive by shoot them rather because the stress system will kind of protect them from that um on community servers who knows that depends on their settings but yeah so it's something that we have to just look at more and we have to consider the impact on gameplay before we really know one way or the other yeah right uh here's a question for brandon uh what's it been like joining the team as the uh, community manager uh it's been pretty awesome actually i've always wanted to contribute to gaming in some way and i think this is uh this is how I will be doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about writing, coding not so much. I took a bit of coding in university, and I can't believe uh, how crazy it is. And what the guys at, uh, what the guys at the office actually have to go through. It's, it's all Greek to me, but uh, I really enjoy keeping up the tabs or, on social media, um, answering questions on Discord, things like that. Uh, it's just been really excellent. The, people here are great, and the community is uh, super awesome. See, he has to say that because I'm in India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, what do you actually feel? <laughs> he doesn't no. want to be beat. That's no, no, no. Uh, even even our our mods, uh, we have a few excellent ones, and we even brought some new ones on board today. Uh, they're all doing it out of uh, their own time, and uh, people just really want to see uh, this game succeed because we have something really cool, and we we have this huge passion for this awesome game that allows players to you know customize so many different little little things and uh it's just it's it's hard to really describe what identity is when comparing it to another game it's its own thing and people really want to see that take shape couldn't have said that better myself yeah well said Um, all right you keep your job good job (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) do pledge reward vehicles have special skin they're yeah they're very 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 unique skins yes yeah you you will not be able to obtain the pledge reward vehicles in game unless you've you've pledged for them so you can't sell pleasurable cars no no that that's one thing too um anything that you get through the pledge rewards not just cars you will not be able to sell in game and the reason for that is we don't want people with a bunch of money to have an advantage in the game by buying pledge items and then selling them to yeah game. because they're not they're not being taxed on these items that they're paying real money for and the it it give them an unfair advantage mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's like the question we had the other day about renting out a park that you get from a pledge system yeah we can't do that because we don't want people to make income off a pledge reward yeah so what can players look forward to in the town square module oh god there, there's actually you know for a social module there's quite a bit in there the biggest one by far is the player housing so you have access to the full player housing system um you know the furniture the decorating and the whole permission system you know you can have your friends access it you can like throw some parties if you want to uh, you know the list goes on then outside the housing you know um it's like take this uh, linearly in my mind when you go down the elevator you come out in the hotel lobby 
in the hotel, there's the uh, the bar. So the karaoke bar is there. You can buy food. You can eat food. You actually like, sit down at a restaurant table and order food. It's kind of neat. And uh, the karaoke's in there. So there's a karaoke mic and, mo- and player, and you can go there and you can make yourself look like a fool, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will be. <laughs> um, aside from that, you know, you got stores. You have the clothing store. You can kind of see how the mechanics work for that and how shoplifting could work. You you can't actually shoplift in a town square, but you will. You can try, <laughs> and it will tell you when that you would have normally set off an alarm or something. But um, aside from that, there's a cinema. Uh, you can watch real movies in a cinema. It's 24 hours around the clock. It's playing commercials and real movies. So you can go in there with other people and watch movies together. Throw some popcorn around. Um, there is, uh, see, aside from that, there is the whole art gallery area. Um, it, when you make a painting in your apartment, you can take that item and submit it to the gallery. And if we approve it because it's not a big explicit picture as we expect to get. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we know there will be some penises submitted to us. Uh, (laughs) If you get an approval, then we can activate that and your painting will actually be available or displayed to everybody in the the art gallery. In the final game, the art gallery will actually be used for buying art as well. So you can actually list art there and other people can buy and bring it home and stick it in their apartment. Awesome. Yeah. So one final question. Uh, will you be able to transfer your character from the town square to the main game? No. No. Well, yes. And well, it depends, though, because it depends on how much we change the player customization mechanics. So now keep in mind that in town square, there's no currency. So when the final game comes out, you're not going to be bringing any kind of inventory with you, to say the least. So in a way, no, like you're not going to carry over. Yeah, that's what I mean. Things you've done, yeah, like like. But that said, your character customizations can remain as long as we don't modify the system so heavily that it's incompatible. Mm-hmm. So most likely, you will be able to in that sense. Um, but at the same time, too, it's very likely that even though same throughout other modules in the system too. Um, the swap module, you'd likely have that character as a base. Um, and uh, even in the racing module, even though there's it's really more just about the car, the same sort of thing on there. So, um, yeah, uh, long, <laughs> that's a long way to say as long as we don't modify the character customization system too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, does anyone have anything else to add? Uh, can I slip on questioning, guys? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I know I do this, like, all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, it's just a question someone was, was uh, concerned about with the housing system. So we recently confirmed that if you buy a house on the land in a server, uh, you have to pay upkeep. You have to log in every now and then. So, you know, you're actually making use of the property. Uh, if you don't, it'll get flipped and it'll go on sale because you don't want people to be consuming resources. But in terms of apartments, um, does everyone who starts the game get a like a free basic apartment in the full game of Identity? In the full game, no. In Town Square, they will. Okay. Well, in, in, in the full game, so the way it works, you'll have access to like hotel room. And mm-hmm. the hotel room is kind of like a little preview taste of things, but you don't get access to customize it in the way that you do your real apartment. Okay. So do you do you still end up paying bills for your apartment then in the full game? No. Okay. But you do have to purchase it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. People with, were within, ga- within game money. Yeah. 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 People were wondering like, no, why did I pledge for a luxury apartment if they're free? <laughs> oh, no. No, no. no, no. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to get that clarified. Yeah, they're just free. They're free in the sense of upkeep, which is a good thing. You don't have to log mm-hmm. in to keep your place. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Confusion. No, no, it's good. Um, I guess, uh, I guess there's just one more thing I want to slip in, and it's it's in regards to what PG Seven just mentioned about uh, players and uh, character customization. Um, when you get your passport. Is your passport basically your account with one character, or is your passport like an account that can have a multitude of characters you get to create and control at different times? Currently, we have three characters per account. That's that's the current okay. situation. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's good. I just wanted that clarified. Awesome. That's all for me. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, thank you guys for uh, you know joining me to do this Q and A, uh, and thank everyone else for watching the video. I know I've been away for quite a while, five months. It's a long time, but unfortunately, <laughs> outside priorities have to come first before YouTube. Unfortunately, but yeah. you know, I would I would love to do YouTube full time, but in the current state it, it is in, I'd rather do it as a hobby. Um, but when the Times Square comes out, definitely expect a lot of videos from me anyway. Uh, mm. I might even live stream as well. So um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, it's our pleasure, guys. Thank you. Yeah, see you guys around.